the doors, how the heavens will ring. Billions there will join this song with We Shall Be.
see the other place in the fall over there. Maybe in the hill fall. You stop by and say, I'm waiting to have I'm waiting to have a long run. Okay, I'm not going to see you. 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 I'm not
for some time. And uh, he, uh, he said, somebody told me you'd be a good person to talk to about the food pantry and Golden Harvest and said, we, don't, we really don't know anything about it. And I said, well, sure, I'd be more than glad to, to help you. I, you, know, I, you know, basically, whatever you need to know, you ask or we'll get together and whatever. And that'll be wonderful. You know, I'm glad to help you. And he said, thank you. I, I, we're not there yet, but I'll let you know. So this morning, when I came back over here to the computer, I happened to click on it. Uh, uh, Aaron had sent me something, and I was going to click on that to look at. And he had, there he was, and there was another message. And it was a long message about, he said, Brother, I, I just want to start out by saying, please forgive me. He said, you know, I was rude to you, and I was a little hostile to you, and and he just, a long list of things, okay? He said, and the bottom line was, I did not understand what you were trying to do, and it was a God thing, but I didn't understand it at the time, but looking back now, I understand it. And I, just please forgive me. And I was kind of, you know, a little surprised. And so I said, I sit him back and I said, well, brother, you're forgiven. You, you've been forgiven mm -hmm. for some time. Amen. I said, I consider you to be a good friend. Uh -huh. I said, please do not let Satan bring up your past and trouble you in your current ministry because he's pastoring a church now. I said, don't do that, please. I said, I love you, and I consider you a good friend, and I can't wait for us to get together and, and, and get some work done for your, your ministry. And I'm just like, Lord, you really pulled it on me today. You really, you, really, you know, uh, we always pray about things like that, and you ask the Lord to give you stuff and reveal stuff to you, and, and you know, he does through a variety of ways, but this was just, just flat out in your face, two, two within about 30 minutes. And I just said, well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you. For, for sharing with us and for letting us know we're in the middle of your will and we're doing just what you would have us to do. Praise God. So I take that as a, not just for me, but for all of you, all of us that work in this ministry, that God's confirming what we're doing and he's going to bless us. All right, I'm going to preach to you today, and if you saw the, uh, if any of you see the, the bulletin on Facebook, or you see the Facebook page in general, you already know what I'm going to preach to you about today. I'm going to preach to you about working for a harvest, and this is a God message, I'm going to tell you, Amen. and I, every one of us, including me, needs to hear it today. So just when we, when we get there, just take your seatbelt off and just go on ahead and get ready to rock and roll. Amen, Amen brother. But first, uh, we're going to stand we're going to sing an old hymn. Some of you may know it, some of you might not, but the words are going to be up on the screen. No, you can see that screen. You, you can't see that thing on the screen. And you got a screen back. Uh -oh. oh my goodness. Uh -oh. The Dolores screen is off in the back. I didn't do it. Two years to get it hooked up. There we go. You had to drop the remote first. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Can you see it now, Dolores? Yes, thank you. She can see it now. Well, we're going to start on the chorus, okay? Which is the next slide. And then we'll go back to the verses. Y'all ready to sing? <laughs> 
the way you give me the next slide in.
today. We always have a long list. You know, I don't mind having a long prayer list because that means people trust us to pray for them. Right. Okay? So, that's more important than anything. That people trust us on the Facebook page. All kinds of people post on our prayer chain Facebook page that they want prayer. Okay? And we pray for them. Do I have to know exactly, specifically what's wrong with everybody? No, praise God, I don't. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He knows. Alright? So I don't have to know. I just have to know that I'm going to obey God's Word. We'll anoint you with oil. It says, bring your, your issue to the elders of the church. They'll anoint your head with oil. And then we'll pray a prayer of faith over you. In faith, believing that God's going to do something. If this was just some ritual that we did that don't amount to a hill of beans, we wouldn't be doing it. But I've had too many people, even on Facebook, tell me that 
They received a touch from God during this healing service. Amen. So we're going to sing a chorus. And then the elders are going to go out there. All of our regular prayer requests are in the bulletin today. And please remember these people. Uh, did Hugh get out of the hospital? Yeah. Hugh's still in the hospital. So remember that. And certainly remember the Lions and the Durant's family and, and their loss and uh, the Rowe family and others. And several, several people have passed away that's on this list. And so we're not remembering them now. We're praying for their family. Amen. All right. They're in a much better place. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a good friend of mine from my home church. Uh, Bible, uh, the Bible was still with my new church. Yeah, but um, Pine Grove Baptist Church, mm -hmm. Claudia Ratliff. Uh, she just had surgery two weeks ago to remove part in her brain. She had a large tumor. But now she has another situation that is even worse. I'm not going to really get into much of it. Just know that she needs a lot of prayer. Amen. Now, I know when she leaves this world, she's going home to die. All right. But just pray for her and her Well, that's family. the ultimate healing. Yes, Claudia sir. Ratliff. Claudia Ratliff. Ratliff. Okay. We'll remove that when we pray. Do remember Dolores. She's, her eyes seems to be getting worse. Uh, we went to the eye doctor, and he had the solution. And she's been putting that solution in her eye, and well, it's just got worse. It seems to be getting worse and worse. Now, of course, I said that because if anybody in here is naive, naive enough to think that I was just, I slapped her and she got a red eye like that, you don't, you don't know me and you don't know Dolores. But you see, I ain't got no marks on me. Uh, but remember that, remember... Uh, Lisa Best Child, we have an unspoken request. Deb, Ivy, Avery, 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 Josh Watkins, Angela Bates, Teresa's sister who watches us faithfully on, on the, the Facebook, Cherry Cook, uh, Sister Betty, Rima Cabrina. We're praying for some things to happen around here. And, and God's gonna, gonna meet the need of people. Not, not money, not stuff, people. Amen. Yes, All right. sir. Remember Debbie, remember Cindy and her family and Stevie and the loss of his father and the Cochran Pryor family, Suzanne Wilson, and Courtney Hill. Anybody else have a prayer request we need to pray about today? All right, if you would, we're going to sing this chorus. You... If you'll just slip your hand up where you are, once the music starts, the elders will come out and we'll lay hands on you and pray for you. Okay? Miss Dorothy's Ms. sister. May Alice Brooks. We're going to claim total healing no matter what. Anybody else? Okay. Give me that key. I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary Those precious blood stains will make their just
And so if you know anybody that needs that, let us know. Next Saturday night, 6 p.m. Now, if you look at your bulletin, you'll see that I I got a big grill on there, and that show does look like a bunch of big old T-bone steaks on there. Well, well, we're not going to have T-bone steaks. Now, we might have some tube steak, which is, you might call it a weenie. Yeah. Or a wiener. Hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Just say hot dog, man. Yes. But the other picture there, yes, we are going to have a lot of fun. Ryan's going to set up his karaoke outfit. And we're just going to sing and have a great time and smile and laugh with you, not at you. Amen. And it will be more fun. John is our grill master, and I know it's chicken and Boston bud, a pork loin, and so anyway, gonna have lots of food. And we have a sign-up sheet out in the lobby if you would to sign in for side dishes. You say, why do we need to sign in for side dishes? Well, all that meat's gonna be great, but if we end up with five macaroni and cheeses. That probably ain't gonna, ain't gonna fly, all right? So, you know, everybody, look at the list when you sign up, bring something different, and we'll just have you, we'll have a great time. And to quote Brother H.K. McKnight, if you bring good, we will eat good. And if you don't bring good, well, we'll eat what's here. <laughs> so, but do remember the sign up sheet on your way out. Uh, Yes, no, it'll be in the fellowship hall. No, it'll be in the fellowship hall. Uh, then the following Saturday night, uh, Leon Everett will be uh, performing over at the Carolina Jamboree there in Belvedere. And uh, Leon is just, just tremendous. You, most of you saw him when he was here at the church, and we, it was just such a great time. And he loves our church, but he loves the Lord, and and so I'm thankful for him. And we're just going to go over there and support him. It's not a gigantic place. So if you go, go early. All right. Uh, so you can get in and sit down. Of course, that night, uh, or sometime during the day, I can remember what time that game is, Georgia will be whooping up on Florida. Amen. 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 What time is that game? 3.30. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, our brother here is going to get to go. Huh? Yeah, he's going to get to go to the game. So he's going to miss the karaoke and all, but he, oh. trust me. No, but we'll sing the George Pike songs. What can we say? Black and red. You got it. You got it. Go. And if you're blue and orange, just don't tell me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Have you ever had fried gator? I have, thank you. It's a little chewy for me. But, uh, all right, the next day, October the 31st, is Founders Day, where we'll be celebrating Brother H.K. and the charter members of our church that founded the church. And former Pastor Kelly McKnight will be here. He and Chad's are going to be here. And we'll just have a great service. We will have a good time, so be here if you can. And the rest of that's not important. It's all in the bulletin. If you didn't get a bulletin, you should have. We work hard on this bulletin, so you should have got one. All right? Now, come on over here, brother. I keep hearing that bird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At our last board meeting, uh, Brother Aaron has been speaking at our early services, mm -hmm. you know, just about every other Sunday for some time. Mm -hmm. Been a year? Several years. Yeah, because you were just doing it every once a month, mm -hmm. and now you've picked that up a little bit. And he has filled in this pulpit for me, along with Steve, when I was gone hurricane chasing either. But, uh, or whenever I had to be out. When I was sick back in January, this pulpit was always filled with the man of God. Yes, and so, 
uh, I wouldn't take it lightly. Not just anybody's going to get behind this pulpit. Uh, I take that very serious. Amen. And because uh, I've seen enough junk over the years to know I don't need no more of that. Not up in here. All right. And not certainly going out over Facebook. But um, Brother Aaron was working with another church and was just kind of feeling a little drawn to God had something else for him to do. And so we talked about it several times. And, but we talked in length about it. And he brought me a, a, a resume of all what he's done. And I mean, I mean, this young man has a master's degree from Liberty University. So he's, uh, he's had some great training in, 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 in practical and in reality out in preaching. He's, he's had a lot of experience. So, I never prayed for him to leave his old church. I wouldn't do that. I told him I wasn't going to do that. I was going to leave that up to the Holy Spirit and him, whatever he felt like he needed to do. So, he expressed to me that he felt like the Lord was leading him here. And I, I, I was about to ask him if he had discussed it with his wife and family when he told me that his wife agreed. And so I said, well, that was my only question. Tiffany was okay with it, then I felt like you knew what you were doing, and that was a God thing. Amen. So at our last board meeting, uh, the board voted unanimously to accept Aaron as a, an additional assistant pastor. Steve is always an assistant pastor and will continue to be, and Aaron will be an assistant pastor. Amen. And I want to tell you, having been in this pulpit for four years with almost no assistant, I can tell you I needed it. Amen. This was a God thing right here. So you just make him welcome. You make him and Tiffany welcome. I'm not going to make Tiffany come up here. You just, y'all make them feel welcome. Okay, would you do that? And I want you to point your hand this way. And, uh, a lot of our board's not here today, so we're not going to worry about that. But just point your head toward Aaron today, and we're going to pray and ask God to do everything he wants to do in this family and in his Amen. life. Amen. Father, I thank you today for your wonderful mercy and grace, Lord. I thank you yes, for beyond comprehension. You know what's best, and we want what's best through your word. I thank you for Aaron and Tiffany today, God. I, I speak blessings upon this family, on this house, God. An abundance show favor in everything they put their hand to. God, guide Aaron, lead Aaron in this process as he breaks into a new church. But I, I want to tell you, this man loves you. And I know you love him. And so I just ask you to pour out your spirit upon him. In an abundance, God, lead and guide every step that he takes. God, guide his path in everything that he puts his hand to. And I pray that in the precious name of Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh, God is good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to change that. That'd be great. God is great. Amen. All the time. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's move into our giving service today. And as you know, we don't take your offering. We receive it. The plates are in the front. You walk down and bring your offering during the music. And we're going to sing a little bit. And I'm going to preach a little bit. And I know God will bless you today. But if you would stand, hold your offering up, let's recite our tithers creed, and then we'll receive your offering today. Here we go. God, this is my tithe. I withhold nothing from you in my life. I give you nothing from my pocket that did not come from my heart. I live on the principle of Malachi 3.8. I release the windows of blessings in my life because of my obedience to your word. I'm a cheerful giver. I am blessed going in and coming out. 
The devourer is rebuked over me and my family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give today. Aaron's going to sing a song for you, and then we're going to sing another song before I preach today.
Go back through that second verse again. I want you to listen close to these words. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. Within the 
arms of God He walked with me And not a bird shall harm me For I'm sheltered in the arms of God Oh yes, I'm sheltered in the arms of God Amen Amen, amen Thank you Thank you, singers, musicians Praise God Almighty. Woo! I can feel the Holy Ghost. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Working for a harvest. We will work until Jesus comes if we are faithful. And if we're not faithful, we'll just sit on our duff and do nothing. And pretend like everything's all right, and then we're gonna find out in the end that we was wrong. Now I don't know about you, church member, fellow Christian, you watching by Facebook. If you think times is tough now, I want to tell you, you don't want to miss the rapture. Amen. Because once the rapture takes place, this world is going to be thrown into chaos like it's never known before. Amen. Jesus said. It would be worse, the worst time that this planet has ever known. Now you think about that. So you don't want to miss the rapture. But if you do, that's when you're going to find out you was wrong. Okay? That's when you're going to find out you was wrong. But you'll have some time to get, get over it, I guess, and fight your way through third of the population is going to be killed. A third of the water is going to be poisoned. And let's just say it's going to be tough. And for all of you that think, well, that's over there. That's not going to happen in the United States of America. Brother, we're, we're at the door in the United States of America. Amen. We're in tribulation practice. Amen. No, I don't believe the vaccine's the mark of the beast. That's ridiculous. But we're getting in practice for it, though. You do this, you shut up, you sit down, you stand up, you do... Well, I mean, it's, it's a control thing. Now, I don't believe that's the basis of the vaccine. But I believe there are people that are using it to try to control the American people like we have never been before. Now, I'm going to get off that. God would often use in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament... He would use the illustration of a farmer because everybody who heard him understood that. They might fish, they might build cabinets, they might do whatever they did, else they did, but everybody knew they better have a garden at the house to raise some food. And so most of them pretty much understood what the farmer has to do to secure his harvest because they themselves understood that. And a good harvest comes when the farmer obeys the laws of nature established by God. Seed time and harvest. It'll never go away. The earth may be replenished and refurbished later on down the road, but the seed time and harvest will never go away. That's a God thing. And if you obey the law that God has established in seed time and harvest, then you will produce a good harvest. Because <laughs> trust me when I tell you, there is a bad harvest. Amen. Well, you don't want none of that. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. My main verses are going to be out of Isaiah chapter 28. But... Um, Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Here we go. And he answered and said to them, this is Jesus talking, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. 
Now that's important, friend. Right. See, I have the Son of Man living in me. All right. But the world is the field. That's where the plowing is going to be done. That's where all of it's going to be done. <clears throat> the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Even Jesus recognized the fact that everybody was not going to be a good seed. He knew that. So basically, and later in Scripture, he says, leave them alone. You know, if there's nothing you can do to help them, let them grow. But at the end, we will separate the wheat, and wheat from the tares. Trust me, that'll happen. All right. Now, in Leviticus chapter 23, some things about harvest I wanted to point out to you real quick. Some God things about harvest. God told them in Leviticus, you shall not reap the corners of the field. All right. Nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. See, God's always been willing to take care of the poor Amen. and the stranger. Always. He loves them just as much as he loves you rich people. Amen. Okay, know that. Amen. So, but don't, you know, go through. See, they weren't like today. We got these big old combines that go, you know, they do acres and acres and acres. You see it. The ones that grow that hay stuff, and they got machines just roll it up in the big old roll of hay. You see that all the time if you travel through anywhere in the outskirts, you know, in the country, what we call it. All right? But leave the corners. In other words, you say, don't even cut that down. <laughs> and as you go through in the harvest, and you cut and put it in the bag, and cut and put it in the bag, if you drop a pile, leave it. Don't pick it up. Because when the day is done, as you remember the story of Ruth, when the day is done, Popo is going to show up. They're not going to get in the way of the farmer and all the workers. But when they're done for the day, the poor folks going to show up with day bags. And they're going to go through and they're going to pick up them little piles that you left behind. And some of them will have a sickle and they'll go over to them corners and they'll cut down their own. But you leave that. Look at that. Look at Deuteronomy. The rhyme is kind of the same, but it changes a little bit. If you forget a sheaf, a sheaf, you know I'm having trouble with them words, a sheaf, okay, I got it, in the field, you shall not go back and get it. If for some reason one of your big old bundles that you picked up rolls off the back of the ox cart to the ground, you leave it. You don't go back and pick it up. Now, see, that has nothing to do with cleanliness or all that. All right? Don't go get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Now, listen. Why do you obey God? Why do you do that? You know, I'm a businessman. Man, I'm going to cut the whole field down. I'm getting all the good I can get out of it. I don't care about this other stuff. But God tells you why you do it. Why you give extra money for the food ministry or the, the building fund, or the thrift store we're working on. Why you give extra for that? Why you do extra? You ain't got to come down here on Friday and help us, but just something in you says, I want to go down there and help. And you do it. So, why? Why do we do that? The last verse says, part of that verse says, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Amen. That's why I pray that way so much. I ask God to show you favor and bless you to everything you put your hand to. I want you to be blessed. Because if you get blessed, that'll bless me. And I like to be blessed. Amen. Praise God. Now let's look at Isaiah, what he says in Isaiah. You know, I was talking to you out of the 28th chapter of Isaiah last week, and, and it, it wasn't the happiest thing. All right? But now, Isaiah, God, the Holy Spirit through Isaiah, gives us a, a parable, if you want to, about farmers. Give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my speech. Does the plowman keep plowing all day 
to sow? Yes. Okay. Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? Yes. Okay. Look at the next verse. When he has leveled its surface, does he not <laughs> sow? I'm going to stop right there. He said, why did you say yes? Because he's going to plow that field until he gets it right. <laughs> if any of you know anything about plowing, I remember one time in the Boy Scouts that had, had us plowing with a, uh, a mule. And let me tell you, that first run with that thing was pretty rough. I mean, that, that first run, when that mule started out, man, you was doing your best to hold on to that thing. It was rough. You hit rocks, you hit all kinds of stuff out there. So then the next time you kind of come through, it was, it was a little better and a little better and a little better. And you come through again, and so I'm saying it's an all-day process. It's not something you just don't, you know, boot do it. Not in their day. So they had to plow all day, keep turning over the sod till they got all the clods out of the way, and they had their nice little furrows down through the field. See, when God wants to bless you, He wants to get you straightened out first. Now, he'll save you in the mess you in. But after that, he's going to plow your field. Amen. And that first plowing through is going to be kind of rough. But then as time goes by, God just molds and makes you. All of a sudden, your field is perfect. It's fit to be sowed. So look what he says. Does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin? Plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place. He said, Brother Jimmy, what in the world is he talking about? The King James uses the word fitch. All right. Which is kind of cute. But fitch is a pea. It's a vegetable. It's a common pea. All right. It's all you pea lovers. I mean, the Lord loves some pea. All right. And that's what it means uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the Hebrew. The Hebrew word denotes fennel or dill that's mixed with bread for flavor. Now, the wheat, the barley, the wheat, and the rye, all of that goes into making bread. One's a, sum, one's a spring harvest, one's a, a, a summer harvest, and one's a fall harvest. So, you know, you might have had, I don't know which one's which, I ain't going to pretend, but I'm just going to say this. If, it, if the spring harvest was the rye, well, everybody had rye bread. All right, you know, and so forth and so on. You made bread out of what you had, but they were common plants to Palestine. Cumin, as listed here, is something that is ground up and you use it to, to flavor soup and, and other vegetable items. It's a flavoring. So what you got here? You got a vegetable, you got bread, and you got flavoring for your soup and your meat or whatever. Does that pretty much cover the whole gamut of it? Yeah. Okay. Now you say, well, I don't know why they plant peas, why they plant tomatoes, because I don't think they had tomatoes over there then. All right. That's why. Just, just, I don't know if somebody was thinking that. They just, poof, that just come out. Right. But yeah. So look at verse 26. Now this is, this is certainly a stunning verse out of the Word of God. For he, God, he instructs him, the farmer, in right judgment. His God teaches him. Have you ever been taught? God ever taught you anything? Don't get quiet up in here. I remember the old song that said, uh, one of my favorite songs out of a movie. 
said, you can't sleep at night. And your soul wonders why. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Huh? Maybe God is trying to tell you something. And the only way you're going to get it is, I hear you, Lord. God's trying to tell me something. Praise God. But listen. God has instructed man in almost every activity of his life. You hear me? To what extent he taught people to farm and they passed it on down to their sons and daughters and so forth and so on. We don't know because the Bible don't say. But you know what the Bible does say? In Genesis 6 it says that he instructed Noah in how to build the ark. Gave him the plan. Told him how to do it. And I'm sure at the very beginning of that little deal, Noah went, huh? A boat? There ain't no water around here nowhere. But it says God told him to do it. And he did it. In Exodus, the 31st chapter, when time come to build the tabernacle, God will finally have a house or a tent to worship in. It says that God, through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge gave these workers in all manner of workmanship to devise uh, cunning works in gold, silver, wood, overlay, and all that to build that temple, the tabernacle. God didn't say you know, he showed him a blueprint, and then he showed Moses the blueprint. But it says, by the Spirit of God, he gave these men the ability to suddenly know how to work, how to work with gold, and how to work with silver. Amen. So God is, and always has been, giving us instruction. Now the next verse says, for the black cumin is not threshed with the threshing sled, nor is a, is a cartwheel rolled over the cumin, but the black cumin is beaten out with a stick. You didn't run over the, the cumin like you did the wheat. You beat it with a stick. I wish I'd have brought my stick. I should have brought my I got a stick at the house of spider webs. They took them sticks and wah, 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 Looked at it a little bit. Maybe turned to this side and went wah, 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 wah. They beat it with a with a stick to get it right. But now, anybody have been beat with a stick? Now, I'm not talking about your mama. I'm talking about God. God ever had to beat you with a stick? Some of us. I know some of us he has. Don't raise your hand. But then some of us has had to get whacked a couple of times. All right. Then. Witness when he says, and the cumin with the rod, bread, flour must be ground. Therefore, he does not thresh it. And he beat it with a stick. Okay, forever. Break it with his cartwheel or crush it with their horsemen. They would hook a, a sled up to the back of a horse and they would let the horse run over it. You know, walk over it and that machine, the, the sled would crush it and break it and do whatever needed to be done to it. And the vegetable was beaten with a staff. The cumin was beaten with a rod. And at times they had to beat wheat with a rod if they were in hiding. You know, when the Philistines were going to come in to steal the crops, you, you get you some wheat, you go off in the hiding place somewhere and beat it. But most of the time, an ox treaded out. Because you remember the verse, don't muzzle the ox as it treads out the corn. And all of that would come together and would, would basically produce the end result. Now, I don't want to be run over with a sled. I, I haven't had that happen to me now. I've been beat a little bit with a stick. But I don't ever want to go that far that God just has to bowl me over. Bring me down to the lowest I can go. I mean rock bottom to then say, well, big boy, you think your way is going okay? 
You think it's going okay with you, do you? And get you to a place to where you just have to say, no, God, you got my attention now. I know my way is not the right way. It happens. You just don't wait too late. Don't wait too late for it to happen. And then verse 29 says, This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Amen. You're looking for something to build your life on. You're looking for something that you can grab a hold to and you can run with it and be safe and sheltered. God is a wonderful counselor. And he is excellent in guidance. You know, in my life, a time or two, I've got some really crazy directions. You know, turn left where the old tree used to be. Excuse me? You know, I'm not from around here. What do you mean? Oh, an old tree. You know? I've got some crazy directions. Even from the GPS, I've got some crazy directions. Amen. Amen. But when I want guidance and I want counsel, I'm going to the Word of God. I'm going to the Word. As I said last week, everything in your life will be measured by the Word of God. And it will be yes and amen or it will be no. Praise God. Now in closing, I want to look quickly at Matthew chapter 9. Here's where your work comes in. Now some of y'all might have a garden at your house. You might be still be all for me with this. I used to have a big one when I lived over here in Harrisburg. Okay? And it about worked me to death. But here's the true meaning of working for a harvest, okay? Then he, Jesus, said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, what does that mean? That means the hard work's been done. The plowing's been done. The planting's been done. The watering's been done. The weeding has been done. The hoeing, chopping back the stuff has been done. All that's already been done. Uh -huh. We're past that. Yes. Now we're at harvest time. And Jesus said it's right to harvest See what he was talking about? He had just been doing all these healings and stuff and he had just met the woman at the well and told her everything about her life. And we're in Samaria. She runs back in town and tells everybody. And here all these Samaritan people come out there and they want to know who is this man that she's talking about. And it's at that point that Jesus looks at his disciples and says, The harvest is truly plentiful. Amen. Go to work, brothers, sisters. Go to work. Here they come. Look, we've got a great thing, and I've drawn them all out of the city. And here they all are coming. Go to work. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest that he sends you laborers. Well, I've been praying, and I've been fasting. Y'all know that. And I've been praying, and I'm going to keep on fasting. Amen. But God's going to supply every need that we have at this place. Amen. Yes, this is not an accident. We're not still here after 58 years. We're not still here after COVID. Amen, brother. A whole bunch of places shut down during COVID. They ain't coming back. Amen. That's right. No. We're here because we're in obedience to God's word. And we're going to listen to him. And we're going to uh, go out into this harvest. And we're going to bring back grain. We're going to bring back fruitfulness. Amen. Now like I tell you so many times, you say, Oh, well, ain't that the preacher's job? The preacher's supposed to go bring all the people in. Really? No, no. Really? <laughs> Almost every other Sunday, I'll tell y'all, say, y'all bring some visitors. You know, somebody, just bring a friend with you. 
you know, you know, who knows? They might like the music, you know, they might like the preaching, but they might like the music and they might like the people, you know, you know, because we are a very friendly church. Amen. And we're a united church. Amen. So just just ask them to come, you know. You don't never know they might come. Amen. They might not. But if one out of fifty people you ask comes, that's a victory. Amen. Just saying. The laborers are scarce to continue the gospel of Christ. And then there are churches all over the planet that think they got it going on. But they don't preach the blood. They don't preach the cross. They don't preach heaven. They don't preach hell. They preach happy. Happiness. Okay? Well, I want to tell you, friend, ain't nobody happy in hell. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs 20. They addressed it. The lazy man, the slothful man, will not plow because of the winter. It's too cold. I can't go out there and do anything. It's too cold. Well, guess what? I guarantee you in the summertime, you know, it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot for me to go out there and do anything. Okay? And then, of course, you know, when you know mom was sick, and, you know, and I really can't do much, you know. Or one of the kids is, you know, is sick or whatever. You know, that's always something, you know. I remember years and years, all my life, my mother used to say this little phrase, and it served out pretty good to me. Can't never could. And I can take it a stretch further. Ain't never will. If you ain't going to work, you ain't going to work. And that's between you and God. I'm not saying you lose your soul or you're not saved or any of that stuff. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength, then you will work this field that is ripe to harvest. Glory. God, look at John. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Now there is another one. You know, I'm, I'm going to be ready to do it. But I've just got so much going on right now. I need to wait and, and I'll, I'll come back. I'm going to get it done. Huh? How many of us have heard that? If you heard that from a plumber, you wouldn't pay him. You'd say, oh, no, brother, you'll finish this job right here if you think I'm going to pay him. Or anything else like that. Right? Okay. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Amen. I don't care where you at. I don't care if your job puts you in the seems like the middle of hell itself. You're supposed to be that one shining little lighthouse there. You're the one that ain't cussing, ain't telling dirty jokes, ain't doing all this, ain't doing all that, ain't ain't doing drugs, you know all that stuff. That's you. In the midst of all that trouble. So he said, you want to know why God's got you there? I just told you why he's got you there. Amen. Now all that darkness needs to see some light. Amen. And we must bring in the harvest. And then the next couple of verses. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. Amen. There is a crown, my friend, for the soul winner. Amen. In the end, we can talk about rewards and crowns and jewels and all that, and that's great. I hope to get a few, you know, but I'm, I'm going to be so glad I'm there. I don't think it'll bother me. Amen. But there is a crown for the soul winner. And you say, well, ain't that just preachers? No. You bring them in here. You get them in here. You ask your friends to watch it on Facebook. You share this service on your Facebook page and let all your friends see it. Amen. Now I know there's a scatty y'all might be Pentecostals in the closet and you don't necessarily want all your friends on Facebook to see all this going on. But I challenge you to do it. There's a mission field out there. Amen. With Aaron's help, listen, we're fixing to go to live stream on YouTube 
And on our website, we're going to have a brand new website. We're going to take off with this thing. And all of that because there is a harvest out there. And it's ready. It might not realize it, but it wants it. It wants something good. It wants peace of mind. It's out there. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Amen. For in this the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. See, when you post this service on your Facebook page, your friends that see it, they might not come here. It might bring them back to where they need to be with the Lord and they may say, well, I need to get going back to my church. Amen. Wherever that is. So guess what? We sowed and some other church is going to reap the harvest. Amen. Yeah, huh? And I'm all right with it. Amen. Yeah. One sows and another reaps. Okay? So I'm just seeking God and asking God for favor in the fact that I, we're ready to reap. Okay? Yep. We've sowed a whole lot of harvest. Now we're ready to reap. But we're not going to sit on our behind and expect God to do it for us. Amen. The field is white. The book of Revelation speaks of two harvests. And the first one is going to be the rapture. He's going to harvest every born again child of God that's watching and waiting for him. He's going to rapture us out of here. Amen. And then he speaks of another harvest. But the angel says, take the sickle. It's the time. And at the end of the tribulation, he's going to appear for the second coming. And he's going to wipe out the Antichrist. And the battle of Armageddon will be finished with a word out of his mouth. Oh, praise God. God understands harvest. He's got two planned in our future. Because on that second harvest, when he comes back to get all that belong to him and all the Jews that are converted, we're coming with him. In John chapter 9 is the last verse I want to read for you today. Friend, I need you to take this to heart. I need you to believe this verse. I need you to take it, think it over, study it, memorize it, quote it every day if you have to. All right? Because this verse is one of the most important verses in the time we're living in. It's super important. I must work the works of him who sent me. Now, that was Jesus talking. But see... I belong to Jesus now. Yeah. He's my elder brother. Yeah. I've been adopted. Yeah. Okay? I got rights. Okay? I got powers on my side. Because greater is in me than in anything else. Right. Amen. Huh? Yeah. But Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Okay? The night is coming when no one can work. I want to say that again. We better be working while it's day. Because when it gets dark, <coughs> it's going to go very dark. And there's not going to be any ability to work then. You hear me? Yeah. All of us got loved ones. We got family members. We got all kinds of uh, people that work around us and all that stuff that, that basically if the rapture took place today they'd be left behind and ultimately they could end up going to hell. All of us got it. You know, it's not foreign to me. I know it's not foreign to y'all. We got to work. We got to work till Jesus comes. Because that's the day. But buddy, after he wraps us out of here, then it's going to be the night. And it's going to be very, very hard for your friends and your loved ones to make it. Almost, almost impossible. Not impossible. Almost. 
so we have got to get to work. We have got to work like we have never worked before. You say, what are you going to do? Pray, pray. Read the word, pray. Oh my goodness. Amen. Work. You know? Swing by here once a week or so and pick up trash outside because Lord knows we can pick up trash every day. Amen. And who knows? You might see one of these little guys walking around by here, you know, around here. All these little skinny guys that walk around here, they all know me. I'll say, hey, how you doing? Hey, Pastor. You know, I mean, they could be cussing me and tearing them, and they don't. They, hey, Pastor, you never know what's going by. You really don't. Little things, just little things. You know, when you go to the grocery store, spend an extra five or six dollars on a bag of canned goods that you don't really want, but you're going to bring them down here and put in our box out there. Little things is working. Basically, what Jesus has said is the fields already been plowed. I did that at Calvary. Amen. I did that when I shed my blood on the cross. The field was plowed and it's ready for you. Okay? And some had planted seed. And like I said, some have watered. Some have weeded. And some will reap a harvest. And that's the bottom line. The harvest. The final reaping of the harvest that will produce good fruit for the kingdom. Don't you want that? I mean, really, don't you want it? I want it. Let's be still just a minute. I would say unto you this day, my children, that I have laid out a course for you to follow. Yea, I have blessed this institution. Yea, I will continue to bless this institution. But I say unto you, there's much work to be done. That's where the battle takes place. I say unto you, I will bless you. I will defeat your enemies. I will restore everything to you that's been stolen. But I need for you to obey my word. I need for you to be in obedience to me. And I say unto you, that will be the victory that you have searched for so long. Hear the word of the Lord today. It is time. It is time for the laborer to show his face. It is time for the laborers to do my word, saith your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us. I praise your name. Give the Lord some praise in this house today. Hallelujah. Stand with me today and let's pray. Now before I pray with, with heads bowed and eyes closed, okay, how many of you are going to receive this message today? How many of you are ready to get to work for the Lord? I appreciate all those hands today. I do. Anybody here today don't know the Lord? You don't know His fullness of salvation? Anybody? Anybody wandered away from the Lord today? Not as close to me as you used to be. Okay. For all those that lifted your hand, Father, I ask you right now to meet every need that comes to every worker. God, you meet their needs. 
And by doing so, they will be able to meet other people's needs. And they will be able to get to work. And we will build something that is honorable to the kingdom of God. We will produce good fruit. And for sure, we will give you throughout eternity all the praise and honor and glory for what you've allowed us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All minds clear today? Lord bless you and keep you. May make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. He will show you his mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, everybody, uh